Hey there, this is Mark Forte, Senior Solution Specialist with Toonboom with an expertise in compositing. In this video, we will look at the importance of mats and how they are invaluable in our composites to either manipulate images or to cut away certain parts we don't need. Over here, I have three geometric shapes. I have a circle, a triangle, and a square. What I want to do is I want to cut away parts of this triangle using the shape of the circle. To do that, we're going to use a node called the Cutter node, which is invaluable in compositing. If I click the top knob, it tells me that the image is what has to come in, and if I hit the left, it tells me the mat has to go to the left port. So since I want to cut the triangle, that means I'm going to connect this triangle as the image that goes in and out. To do so, I simply drag the node while holding Alt, and it simply connects to the node. Next, I'm going to show you that I can move this circle over top the triangle. I'll disconnect it to show that it's no longer there, and I only have the color card, square, and triangle showing now. What I'll do next is I'm going to drag the circle into the mat port, and now effectively the triangle is being cut by the circle shape, which was already here. If I drag this down to the composite, you can see it appears again. So essentially, the circle is a shape that we call a mat that cuts away the triangle. And if I choose to move this circle around, you can see that it cuts away different parts of the triangle as I move it. Now you can also reverse this. You can say, I want this triangle only to show up where that circle shows. To simply do this, click on the yellow square of the cutter to bring up the layer properties. Then you can choose inverted, which then says the triangle will only show up where the circle shows. So it's essentially inverting the mats process. You can also do this though in Harmony 15 by double clicking the mat icon, which will automatically switch between inverted and normal mode. If we render this, we can see that we have our square, which is untouched, and our triangle, which is showing only where the circle is. Now we can do certain things to this to make it even more interesting. We could drag a blur module. I'll drag a blur in and I'll connect it underneath the circle. Then I'll go inside and give it a value. So I've blurred the circle. It's still telling the triangle only to show where the circle is, but since the circle is now blurred, it's trailing off. And to visually see this render, we can see that the circle has a blur, which is what's revealing the triangle. We could also reverse this so that the triangle gets cut by a blurred circle. So using this mentality, it gets you wrapped around how you can use these shapes to composite your scenes more effectively or to cut away things you might not want. Let's see some practical uses for this using our background and our character. I'm going to zoom out of my node view and come back to my character and my background. And I'll switch to my display. Let's reset the view by clicking this button here. And we can see that I've placed my character over the background entirely. I did this by making sure that my composite bar was set to bitmap and using the Z of backmost just to show my example. If I want the character to be behind this bush, I can also just grab this bush and use it as a shape to cut away my character. Select the transform tool, select the layer you want to affect the character, and we're going to grab the nub here and wire an instance of it outside using the multi-port out. Going back up, you can see that I now have access to this bush so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a cutter to my character, alt click to connect it, and then I'm going to drag this in and connect to my mat port. And you can see a bitmap layer cuts a vector shows as this for the anti-aliasing. To see the results, I'll simply click my render button, and there you go. Now the bush is cutting the character, and it appears completely behind. What if I wanted to have his hand in front of the bush, but the rest of his body behind? A quick
quick solution would be to select the arm and I'm going to first disable the cutter so we can see what we're doing and then to find the arm in the node view I simply have to hit O on my keyboard with the node view selected and it brings me straight to the drawing that I've selected now if I zoom out I know that my character is grouped together so my entire arm is here I can drag this out all the way outside using the multi-port out and I now have access to it. I'll reactivate the cutter but now what I want to do is cut the piece that is going in by that arm so that it effectively cuts away my character except where the arm is showing. I'll drag another cutter in, I'll connect it here and then I will cut this shape by the arm. Now as you can see sometimes that may or may not work. You may get some subtle anti-alias ed edges here. In this case what might be a better idea is to physically move the character in front or behind and use one thing to cut away. However if you're cutting vectors with vectors then this issue will not repeat itself. Just to recap, we have the character coming into the image, which is what's going to our final composite. We're cutting the character by the image of the front bush, but before that happens, we're also cutting that bush by the arm of our character. If I add a display node to this, and I'll just use the same display node, you can see the results from the first cutter and then the results from the second cutter, which ends up showing the background and our characters cut with the proper layering. Another way that we can remedy this situation is instead of using cutters we can simply return everything to the way it was by deleting all these nodes and making sure that our leveling is correct. So since this is currently a bitmap composite, I will switch this back to a pass-through. And now what I can do is physically choose to cut this bush by that arm. So I'll drop in a cutter onto the image and then I'll wire the mat up from the port up to the multi-port in so that I can drag something inside to affect it. Again, I'll go and select that arm to find it in the node view. And I'll switch down to the composite that holds the entire arm. Then I'll click and drag outside to bring it to the multi-port out. Now I have the arm and I have an input for what will cut the bush. So if I connect this to this, I have the same results. But if I zoom in, you can see that it's a much better edge. So layering will be important to not only use cutters at all times, you can just layer things properly and then use cutters when necessary.